Welcome back. Today I have a very special unboxing, the GMT Master 2 in white gold with the Pepsi ceramic bezel and blue dial. I pre-ordered this three weeks ago when I picked up my Explorer 2 uh, polar dial and I put half down as a deposit and they couldn't guarantee when it would come in but they said it could be anywhere from six weeks to six months. So that was three weeks ago and they just called two days ago letting me know it had arrived. I'm filming outside this morning to show off the colors and the shine on this watch and to try to give a true appearance on the shade of the colors. I'll get right into opening the box. I thought I might get a large box because it's a gold piece but this is the regular medium sized box. They had already removed the stickers before I had got there and uh, then they sized it up for me after I uh, paid the uh, balance of the price. There was something different with the buying experience this time with the interaction with my regular sales associate but I'll go into that at the end of the video. It has the usual items in the box. I didn't get anything extra. It has the warranty a service card and it was dated May 5th, 2001, uh, which was a, yesterday, uh, the day I picked it up, and the GMT Master II uh, instruction booklet. They were also saying everyone in the store was surprised that it actually came in this quickly. Uh, some of them were actually thinking it might be six months or 12 months to get this. Uh, but I'm lucky I got it in just three weeks. Uh, it has the green uh, hang tag with the uh, uh, hologram and the white hang tag with the serial number. Picking up the watch, I immediately noticed the heaviness of the white gold. It feels very solid and substantial in the hand. I also noticed the difference in color of the white gold compared to steel. The white gold has a warmer tone to it. It's a softer hue, almost a creaminess or almost a slight yellowish tint uh, compared to uh, the steel, which is much uh, cooler in tone. It's a very small difference, uh, but it's nice to know that it's there. And most people really won't notice unless they take a really close look at it. Part of why I wanted to get white gold is I didn't want to attract attention to myself. I think most people would just assume this is a steel watch and a lot of people won't even know it's a Rolex. Uh, during my workday, almost nobody notices my watch and I like to keep it that way. Uh, only a few people would know it's a Rolex and if you know it's a Rolex then um, you know it's an expensive piece and difficult to get. Another thing that sets this apart is the blue dial. So right now the white gold pieces only come with a blue dial or meteorite dial and the steel pieces come with a black dial. The case design itself is the same. It has those slightly wider uh, squared off lugs and the uh, clasp is the uh, oyster lock clasp with the easy fit extension which gives some extra room uh, whenever you need it. The uh, center links are all solid and uh, highly polished. I don't have any uh, scratches right now but I'm a little concerned about how easily this might uh, scratch up but it does have some brushed uh, surfaces on the uh, outer links and the top of the case. The bezel colors look very nice. I think it's a nice uh, tone of uh, blue and red. There's a very slight hint of purple in the blue, but I think it's very, very slight. Um, I think they did a good job of matching the bezel uh, with the dial. So uh, the blue on the bezel and the blue on the dial are very close, actually. The Oyster bracelet itself is comfortable to wear. I'll admit the Jubilee is a little bit more comfortable because it conforms to the wrist better and it's lighter in weight. 
Uh, this watch is heavier, so you notice it a little bit more on the wrist, but I have no complaints with comfort. Going back to the case, it has a nice heft, but it doesn't feel too thick. My only complaint would be the lugs. I think they're still a little bit too wide and squared off, and I'd like to see them a little bit uh, thinner and slimmer. On my six and a half inch wrist, it does have a large appearance, but I like that when I'm wearing a sports watch. I think the Explorer 2 is a nice uh, summer watch to wear and the GMT uh, can be worn uh, all year round. Uh, compared to the size, uh, the GMT uh, looks a little more compact uh, just compared to the 42 millimeter size on the Explorer 2. But everything is relative, so um, I notice it more uh, coming over wearing the Explorer 2 often in the last three weeks and then putting on the GMT Master 2 40 millimeters, which just uh, felt a little more solid and compact on the wrist. The uh, steel on the Explorer 2 is all brushed, so it has a more uh, low-key uh, appearance compared to the uh, GMT Master 2. Small spoiler, I like this one the best. I think it has the best combination of the bezel and the oyster bracelet. Feels very solid on the wrist and uh, under the radar, but still a nice sports watch. I'm still glad I didn't hold out and try to get the steel ceramic Pepsi with the oyster bracelet uh, at the AD. I think they're still basically impossible to get at retail. And I don't want to pay uh, the extra premium on the gray market. And I really want to try to get all my watches directly from the authorized dealer. The steel Pepsi with Oyster will look almost the same as the white gold Pepsi. But I like the idea of wearing solid gold and not being too flashy with the yellow gold. And I like the blue dial, which is uh, distinctive and gives some variety to my collection. The blue dial, I think, on this one is different from any other one they make. It's not the Sunray blue on the Datejust and Skydweller, but it's a flat, matte uh, blue. I can't think of any other watches with this exact dial. The Submariner two-tone, I think, had one before, but now it's a Sunray. I mentioned before there was something a little different with my buying experience this time. The uh, AD still had only seven watches in stock and the last shipment only had two watches um, which was this one and a 41 millimeter Datejust and they expect that one to sell within the next day. But they did seem extra concerned with flippers. They had just caught another customer uh, trying to sell their watches to a gray dealer and an authorized dealer in New Jersey had just recently lost their license because of some shady business practices. Uh, so now the sales associate is required to tell me that this watch is only meant for me and uh, they strongly prefer that I don't sell this watch. They had uh, eight or nine other people asking for the same watch, uh, but they went ahead and offered it to me. They also consider holding back the warranty card for a few months on a case-by-case -case basis, but they didn't do that to me. Just before I left the store, the owner actually called my sales associate on the phone, I think to see how the sale went. Uh, he was asking if I was wearing a watch when I came in, and I was wearing my Explorer 2, so that's something they look out for. And he also wanted to make sure uh, I got it sized to my wrist. So that's another red flag if someone buys a watch and doesn't have it sized uh, to their wrist. So I thought that was interesting. I think they're just being extra careful and want to make sure they don't lose their authorized dealer status. And it might be a sign that Rolex is uh, cracking down harder to uh, prevent flipping. So if you have any questions or requests for other videos, let me know in the comments below. I think the white gold GMT Pepsi is still difficult to get, but it is obtainable if you're patient and go through the process. Uh, thanks for watching.